All right. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Conscious Builder Show. We have the famous Chris Straka on again <laughs> with us. <laughs> um, famous is pushing it a little bit. Yeah. Well, he has been on this. Uh, this will be the third time, I believe. So if you wow. are on our website and you search it, you'll see that uh, Chris has been Frequent on. Flyer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for obvious reasons, we have Chris and I work together a lot. Uh, we have a lot of really good conversations. We have to deal with a lot of problems together. Uh, and most recently, the current state of the world and the uh, industry, which we'll get into and how we're navigating that and the complexities that it's adding to everything, right? Not just our jobs, but everybody else involved in the industry. Um, but for those of you who don't know you, Chris, uh, Give us a little bit of a, a quick intro of who you are and what your background is. I, I think my, uh, I like my Twitter handle or right under my Twitter handle, it says something like, um, you know, designer, planner, builder, and of course, dad. And uh, <laughs> that part of it, certainly um, that latter bit, the dad part, um, you know, has, has taken up a lot more of my time in the last six months. Than, um, than it has, say, in the last six or eight years. But uh, I guess that's a good and a bad thing, depending on the context. Yeah. And but, um, yeah, I mean, look, to finish the bio, um, you know, Casey, you, you just spoke about how we, you know, we worked together in a number of different, uh, number of different projects over the years. Um, I guess professionally, yeah, planner, uh, designer, um, and, uh, and often for myself, a uh, little side hustle as a, as a builder too. Um, always got one of my own in the oven, but, um, from a, a professional perspective, it's, uh, land use planning approvals and, uh, architectural design, um, as much as we can in as sustainable a way as we can through my business, uh, vert design. Uh, which uh, is turning 15 years old um, <laughs> in the next 10 months or so. Exciting. Or so. Yeah. We'll have to, uh, have to have a, a vert design birthday party sometime next summer. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't have to be virtual. Mm. <laughs> but uh, Hope not. Uh, yeah, we originally met when we did our passive house. Well, finished it seven years ago at this point. Uh, but I remember I saw you speak at a Greater Ottawa Home Builders Association uh, event about your first passive house that you built. And then uh, I don't think we really connected at that event, but eventually when we decided, we started doing research and we changed the direction of our business and the way of our thinking, actually my personal thinking, uh, that's when we kind of originally connected. And since then, yeah, it's, it's been fun to say the least. Um, right now, I guess we, we actually have quite a few projects on the go together, a couple uh, big ones. Um, Let's talk a little bit about kind of where the industry is because, you know, March when all of this started, everything kind of came to, to a hold, right? And what we're seeing now here in Ottawa is the opposite. Like there's too much work, right? We, there's not enough people in the industry and we're seeing delays everywhere and we're getting, you know, the, the typical question from the clients, you know, how long or why is it taking so long? Like I just emailed a, a supplier for windows for three season room the other day and right. he said, uh, here's your price, uh, February delivery. And I was like, how long is wow. typical delivery? He's like eight weeks. I'm like, is February a typo? He's like, nope, COVID-19. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's business. It's business unusual for sure. But I'm starting to find that that business unusual is becoming usual. I mean, this is perhaps an overused term, but th this is a new normal, at least one that you know has now lasted six, six or more months, and and uh, I suspect you know we're in it for for another at least six months of of different uh, another six months of change. And I think change can be good. Change can also be frustrating and difficult. You know, as as we well know. Um, yeah, especially when you're when you're trying to get windows in you know three months, four months, and um, and you know, we're 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 looking into into the future with question marks and maybe you know we uh, in the city of Ottawa um, it certainly I I think generally speaking has done an excellent job uh, of shifting the way that 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 big bureaucracy does its business. I was impressed um, from early on in the Aprils, in the Mays, 
um, with City of Ottawa staff and their um, their responsiveness at all. You know, I, 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 there, there was a period of time where, you know, I, I blasted out some, some emails, you know, end of March, not expecting to get anything back for, you know, days and weeks on end. And, um, and some people were just almost faster in, in the new reality. Um, what, what has been difficult though, is I think the, the combination of two factors, maybe three factors. There's, you know, the, the, the seasonality of the industry that we work in, um, the fact that especially here in the fall in this fantastic weather that's outside right now, uh, you know, people want to be building. Um, mix that with uh, a really strong real estate market, um, you know, certainly here in, in Ottawa um, and across the country. Um, so you know, people are, are, are motivated to, to take advantage of equity that they've built up in their homes or are, are, um, are wanting, to, you know, wanting to act perhaps on on uh, the you know that pent up deck project that, uh, <laughs> that they just haven't been able to get to, or that that sauna they want to put in their backyard. That's a fun one that we should talk about. But yeah. you know, <laughs> the uh, you know there, there's there's that added demand, or you know, on, on on everybody involved in the industry, and then of course the complications associated with with the imperative to to distance, um, and I, I guess you know, how that influenced supply chains. You know, initially, I don't think we saw um, any influence. I mean, initially in March and April, but certainly lumber prices have spiked, you know, in the last six months. Um, and the fact that many manufacturing uh, businesses didn't know what to do with this thing called COVID in, in March, in April, in May, and so they just shut down. Or people didn't know what to do with the fact that they had kids at home, and so they had to stop going to work. Um, that I think we're now seeing the effects of, be it through window orders. I mean, one of my own personal projects, I'm waiting on, on trim and doors and cabinetry for, for similar kinds of reasons. Um, and then there's just the fact that city of Ottawa staff, for example, uh, they, uh, you know, they, instead of sitting in an office with all of the, the physical and, and, um, and personal resources, human resources that they're, they, they typically work um, within, they're, they're not working from their own homes, like I think most um, others in the knowledge industry are. And, um, and they, uh, you know, they're, they're taking their files home, they're, they're, they're doing the review of our set of architectural plans, and then when they're complete, they need to bring them back to the city hall and, and probably put the plans into quarantine for some period of time before the next reviewer takes them home, takes a look at them, goes back. Um, so yeah, things, things are moving slow. So when, when, when I, when I heard after submitting a set of, uh, of, uh, of architectural plans and a, and a building permit for Kinsella um, on Monday of this week, uh, when I heard that we were probably at least six weeks from, from hearing back from the review team at the city, I was I was surprised, but but not really. It, uh, that that's and and that's one of the the trickiest things. Like I guess with the city, like they're gonna like you said, maybe have it in quarantine. They have to kind of start sending those documents to different areas. But that's one of the trickiest things about our industry is that everything has to be done on site, right? The the planning you know, at least that they can do it at home, but they still have to kind of go get the documents to bring it home and review it. On the construction side though, where there's delays or even on the manufacturing side, if somebody gets sick, they have to stay home. And then if they're around anybody else, everybody has to now quarantine or go get tested. Uh, and yeah. those are the delays that we can't account for, right? Like nobody can predict that this, that actually just happened to us at the job that we're working, another job that we're working with you on. We we're not there right now because one of our guys got sick and to play it safe. Like we have to let everybody know. And then our policy is go get tested. And everyone who is with that person, go get tested or wait for him to come back with a, uh, with a negative test. Right. And then we go back and, and obviously everyone's happy, um, that we're, that we have the policies and the safety procedures in place, but that has now has a domino effect. If we, if we had subs waiting on us to do something and we have to push them back, now we push, get pushed back in their schedule, which pushes everybody else back. And, 
and it kind of goes on from there. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to happen in the sub trades too. You know, yeah. you're expecting the electrician to show up and then their guy's sick and they have to shut down for a week or who knows how long. Right. So the unknown is, the unknown is hard. I mean, yeah. the unknown is scary. I mean, the unknown is also what gives you and I a job, right? Like we, um, you know, of course, there's the there's the really practical things that we do. You know, I I prepare plans, and um, you know, at a real elemental level, I prepare plans, and you guys build them, and um, that that dumbs down what we do incredibly. But I mean, like in in the essence, that is what we do. But but a lot of what we what we do when we're not swinging the hammer or clicking the mouse is listening to questions and getting information and then providing it to our clients you know helping people understand what is unknown and in many cases i think for many people is really kind of scary because it's unknown and it's big and it's expensive and it you know influences um their life or has the potential to influence their life in a really significant kind of way and so whether whether it's the unknown related to a virus and how to avoid getting ill or passing on illness to somebody else or whether it's you know unknown related to well like i don't really know how my walls gonna get built i don't really know if i need this much insulation or this much insulation or what kind of insulation and where and you know ultimately as i just said that's that's why we have jobs. I, I kind of wish um, we weren't so new at this COVID thing. We as society weren't so new at this COVID thing. You know, we're, we're definitely learning on the fly, you know, when it comes to dealing with, with illness. And, uh, and, and that's, yeah, that's tough. I think that's tough for all of us. You know, whether it's, whether it's needing to stay home because, you know, your, your work colleague is, is ill. On, on a construction site and you know, not wanting to pick it up or pass it on um, or needing to stay home because you know you've got a couple of kids or you've got you know a partner or a parent who who needs your support or needs support that they can't get in the way that they used to get it um, because others are trying to you know avoid the unknown or avoid getting ill um, I mean standing in line with uh, with uh, one of my daughters for seven and a half hours on Wednesday for her to get tested for a stomach ache um, that was uh, that was unprecedented. I don't think I've stood in line for seven and a half <laughs> hours for anything ever in my life. Like yeah. not concert tickets, not like to get into a performance of some sort, not like not nothing. I mean, I, I don't even know if I stood in line for seven and a half hours for the birth of that child that was in line for seven yeah. and a half hours. Like I think she was like she Which was child in or she was out. This is Everly on okay. uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, and, and uh, imagine a, a young child standing in uh, line. For that back and forth and back yeah. and forth and we uh, in the field outside of the the skating rink come come covid test center but yeah it's uh, so those systems i i trust will um will be improved you know mm -hmm. there's there there was a rush uh, in the last couple of weeks as as kids were starting to go back to school that um, I think is mirrored in some ways. There, there's this analogy, right, that we're playing a bit on, you know, between um, COVID-19 and just the building industry. I mean, we, even without COVID-19, you know, there's this this demand for testing. Well, at this time of year, as people are trying to get their their projects underway before winter and frost sets in, you know, there's this push on the building department to uh, to, to get plans. Um, reviewed and, and back into the hands that want to, you know, people that want to do something with them. Um, but so, so what do you see, like, what are you predicting or, or think is going to happen in the coming months? Are we going to slow down? Like you said, like the real estate market's really good here in Ottawa too. Um, are you seeing anything slowing down? Are you seeing this kind of flowing? Yeah, to, to use maybe an overused term, I, I think we're in a bit of a bubble here in Ottawa, uh, maybe a bit of a fortunate one. Um, in that our economy is is largely um, driven by uh, the federal civil service. Uh, the fact that we have um, as many um, well-employed uh, people here in the city, um, people well-employed in, in jobs that they'll likely have for many years. I think that 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 um, that keeps the Ottawa economy chugging along pretty steady 
you know, unlike the challenges that are faced by, say, the here we're talking municipal regional economies, but in, in Alberta, for example, you know, as, as they um, go through what I think is an inevitable shift in, um, in the kind of energy that we use in our world and the way that we use energy, um, Alberta and environs and are, are, um, are already in a tougher place uh, than to say those of us that, that live in the auto region are in and, and likely will be still for some time. Um, you know, we get nervous around election times and uh, I, I got a feeling that uh, we won't um, go to the polls this fall, uh, but, uh, but certainly, yeah, you know, in, in years where, um, where there is a federal election, I think that's where, that's where we see our little, our little slowdown. I think also here in Ottawa, we're, we're enjoying spinoff from some of the other major markets like Toronto and Vancouver. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, um, yeah there's those markets uh, have been on fire for some time. And I think people are starting to realize that there's places outside of the center of the universe, Toronto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, side note, I was born there. And I am a Leafs fan. You know, I have uh, <laughs> had some love for the place, but um, yeah, it, I think people are starting to realize that, yeah, in, in the big smoke, um, you can't get as much as you can here in Ottawa or up in Almont for that matter. I mean, beautiful little town. I mean, people are starting to realize that, hey, if, if I can interact with my colleagues the way that you and I are interacting right now, and I can do it um, without, you know, compromising how well I do my job or, or the perspective of my employer on how well I'm doing my job, then like, why wouldn't I move yeah. to Almont? You know? that's such, and, uh, I, I think that's such a great thing that's happening right now is we're not, we're not stuck with where we work now and businesses are realizing like, oh, why did we have this big building that we were paying for to force people to come in? Um, Hydro Ottawa tracks their efficiency. We have some family members that work there and their efficiency matrix has actually gotten better since COVID-19 started. Now that school started, I don't know if it's where it is now. Um, I'm sure like parents having to go and stand in line for seven and a half yeah. hours is not helping them, uh, but that's, that's part of where we're at at this point. But there's, there's definitely some good coming from it too. Well, I think there's going to be an interesting shift. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm spoiling your segue into something here, but you know I've done a lot of thinking and and done some listening recently, you know about uh, about what this new way of working, or it's actually it's it's not really a new way of working. I mean, you and I have met with with clients, you know, pre-COVID virtually uh, for for quite some time. You know, in fact, I think I've been doing it for. Um, for almost 15 years, one of my very first clients ever, back 2000 and oh, late 2006, 2007, um, I designed a cottage for a family that uh, would come up to uh, the Ottawa River, um, upstream from Ottawa in the summer, but uh, their winters were in California. And uh, we started the design process in 2006, 2007, um using technology a lot like zoom and uh it was all video calls even back then can you believe it in the stone age of, <laughs> yeah. of uh you know virtual meetings um so i mean we, we've been doing it for ages i think what's what's different now is that many more employers especially the larger organizations have realized that hey we we don't need everybody in the same place all the time we can be as effective or more effective working from you know working from our own spaces um save the commute put that into family time or to friend time or to me time and um and just live better overall i think that uh, I, I think what's going to be interesting is what happens with some of those 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 big buildings that we've we've constructed in our especially in our urban places um, I, I foresee a time in the not too distant future where we take those, you know, in downtown Ottawa, it's, you know, it's about 20 story buildings um, that might be all um, office commercial at the moment. I see them transitioning into a more mixed use kind of model. You know, I can see larger employers in the future creating residential units in what right now or just a monoculture of of office space so that people can 
can work from home or home from work or you yeah. know, I see, I mean, if you, if you own, you know, if you're, if you're a big tech in Ottawa and uh, you own the majority of a 20 story tower or at least the majority of a 20 story tower, I can see a future where, where you provide fantastic uh, living spaces for your employees and spaces that they perhaps only visited for six or eight or 10 hours a day. And then sort of flipping the model on its head where, yeah, you, you live your, you know, you leave your own living space, you walk down the hall to some amenity that you share with your colleagues. So you can continue working while you're, um, you know, on the bike in the, uh, in the fitness room, or you can continue working when you're, um, you know, going to the restaurant or the coffee shop. Um, yeah, it's an interesting more easily. Because there's a lot of people too, like now that we are working from home, it's great for you and I, we, we've kind of been doing it for years, right? Um, but for the people who weren't set up for it, who maybe even have three, four kids and they're like, I don't have an office space. Like they have to set up like in the corner of their bedroom or something like yeah. that. Having, having, and a lot of people don't like to work at home either. They prefer to go to a space. But if that space doesn't necessarily even need to be the office of the business where you work at, it could just be a private office of some sort that's outside of your four walls and a roof uh, that's close to your house. So they, like to what you're saying, like that, that would be an interesting use of that building for sure. I, I wonder too. And I, I mean, it, in some ways it's a bit of a scary thought, but in the same way as, um, as professional sports have, um, not across the board, but have adopted this idea of bubbling. Um, you know, they put their athletes, they put their coach and their team staff, and in some cases their families into a bubble where they can hypermanage um, the health of the individual and allow um, a critical path, in this case, the play of sport toward uh, you know, the awarding of a, of a final uh, or finalist and um, eventually, a, you know, champions. Um, that critical path to that end happens within a hypermanaged, healthier environment. I, I, I foresee a time where where a large employer might might take a similar kind of approach. They're like, we are on this critical path to, you know, creating a vessel that can fly from Earth to Mars, and we have to do that on whatever the timeline is and we need this group of people to help us realize that goal we're going to take those people and all of their immediate people and we're going to put them into a a kind of living working playing space that uh you know the likes that we i don't think we we really have right now in order to enable that um wh whatever that goal is to be to be achieved yeah i think it creates all kinds of other social challenges but um it, it may be maybe a path to some extent you're almost going back to the way things used to be when you couldn't travel places just because the technology wasn't there right so yeah, you're forced to, to stay within your bubble unless you want to travel uh for days on end to get somewhere else um i guess the difference is that you actually uh, have the ability to communicate people with uh that are not immediately in front of you but to actually physically be with them becomes Somewhat similar, I guess. Now, are you seeing like, like we're talking a little bit about things that could happen, but in your business, like, are you seeing more people interested in the sustainable side of things or healthier building because they're realizing how important their home is now that they spend so much time inside of it? Are you, or where are we? Because you? I think because of the volume of business that I do, you know, I, I mean, I tend to focus on, on four, six, or eight projects max at, at any one time. Um, the individuals that I'm just starting to work with, you know, now this month, um, are it's really the first cohort of new business that that I'm doing um, post COVID. Um, everyone else, you know, we've we've walked the path together through the first uh, you know, six months or so of COVID, and and. Um, and, and certainly, yeah, these clients that I'm s just starting with um, this month, um, the prime motivation for us kicking it off now 
um, instead of having gone ahead in earnest six months ago, 12 months ago, uh, was in part my availability or lack thereof, um, but also uh, their real desire now to create space within their home that was as healthy um, as they could make it um, because they recognize how much time they're spending in their home and also their need to accommodate additional people in their home for longer periods of time. And so um, they, uh, they, they were in touch with me um, uh, over the summer and they basically said, yeah, Chris, we got to go now because if we don't um, go now with you, we're going to have to go now with somebody else. And, uh, and it just so happened that we were finally able to put that, uh, that set of plans for Kinsella to bed, I hope. <laughs> um, and start building and uh, and a few others um, so I you know I had some, some space open up but yeah it uh, it certainly you know, people are 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 thinking about their homes because they're in them much more and uh, the importance of having the right kind of space and I don't know that that always means more space uh, I think that it really means better space um, but there, yeah, there, there is demand and, and I foresee there being demand for the indefinite future. You know, we can like snap our fingers, wave my Harry Potter wand and make COVID disappear from the face of the earth. I think that people have become awakened even more than I think they were becoming before, but people have become awakened to the importance of their living space in a way that, that, that I don't think any of us have have experienced in the past and uh in the same way that we've you know become and these are related you know become awakened to new ways of working together and um, and also the realities of uh i guess systems systems under stress yeah which, uh, <laughs> which we're living through right now so if anybody's listening and not in the construction industry and looking for a career uh there's definitely no shortage <laughs> of work whether yeah. it's on the design side or the construction side but not to say that it that it's any easier like the industry is at least I can speak on the construction side it's a hard business to be in uh, and this is only added complexities uh, so it's definitely not for the, the faint of heart but uh, if you're good at what you do and you're willing to take on the challenge there's definitely a lot of opportunity out there uh, especially if you know to Chris's point like these buildings have to they will be changed right they're not going to be used the way they were used before so somebody's going to have to go in there and, and make a lot of changes and somebody's going to have to design it and somebody's going to have to provide the permits for that and inspect it and everything else right so uh, how is this uh, affecting you like how are you managing it right now because you have a family your father a husband uh, a son, <laughs> you're close with a brother, <laughs> you're close with all of your family and, and you have a lot going on on the construction side. Like how are, how are you managing this personally? I, I tend to, um, I tend to deal with, with the kind of stress that, that COVID um, and, and just illness in general, the kind of stress that illness presents um, much more rationally, uh, much more rationally than my wife, for example. Um, in a in a past life, I, I worked as a as an emergency medical technician, um, a, a much different profession than the one that I'm in right now. Um, but in those years, um, I did not know that about you. Saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a copy oh, of my someday. Or <laughs> yeah. actually, I don't even know if that's in my resume anymore. This is peeling back like 20 years of life and, <laughs> and looking at what I was doing in my mid 20s and, and mid 20s. But um, yeah, it uh, the the kinds of trauma faced by, say, an emergency medical technician um, sets you up for some some kind of day-to-day -day concern uh as i see it you know that that, that we face now um like the i think it sets it up pretty well um I, I i understand um you know having needed to live it uh practice it um you know in every shift how to keep oneself from contracting um, things that someone else may or may not have, you know, the idea of, of masks and gloves and, you know, all the personal protective equipment that um, has now become commonplace, 
um, everywhere um, was always present in certainly in emergency medicine and um, and just in, in medicine in general and uh, and so yeah notions of, of how to how to put on gloves how to take off gloves so that you don't then contaminate your hands with whatever you're trying to protect them from I mean some of that kind of stuff is 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 for me um, really comfortable so I, I I don't feel the stress but yeah my, my wife's had a, a tough time um, at times um, since March and uh, and and that's listen I, I I'd be lying if I said that that I I wasn't anxious at times um, I uh, I'm fortunate in some ways that now my my work is largely through a computer screen um, or if it's on a job site, I don't necessarily need to get right in there with everyone else. I'm able to, to see things from a, from a distance. Um, the, I, I guess the, the, the most challenging thing for me is really, it's been the adaption of having my kids around um, much more than, than ever before. And as I said earlier in this conversation, you know, that uh, th there's some great things about that but there's also some real challenging things you know just <laughs> keeping keeping a six-year-old and an eight-year-old um, entertained when you're on a call and your wife's on a call or whoever the other caregiver if, if you are lucky enough to to be partnered with with other caregivers you know in the care of your children man I, I feel for for people who have been living um, this shared reality but by themselves, perhaps for the first time, without the support of, of you know, the teacher at school or the the daycare center, um, without being able to connect with the neighbor next door or down the street as easily, so that you can get a little bit of respite to you know prepare supper while your kid plays with a friend for half an hour. I mean, well, even just those, human interaction, oh, right? Nata Natasha's tough. grandmother was like by herself for months, and like the first human contact she had was a hug from our son oh, <laughs> and it was like the great yeah. after like three months right and it was like the greatest thing ever for like so the you take those those things you take for granted all of a sudden uh it's a good point so tough so mm -hmm. tough um i yeah I, I i'm looking forward to us getting past this i i i believe in my heart of hearts that that uh, that we will live on certainly um, I believe that uh, you know and unlike some that that we share this planet with I, I believe that um, the threat of COVID is is real um, I, I don't think it's a conspiracy um, I've spoken to people who uh, have had the, the illness and um, the words that they use to describe their experience. Um, having it, the, the, those, were, those were pretty strong experiences. And uh, um, I, I, I believe in science and I believe that, uh, that ultimately um, our systems will will work um, that we will uh, either find a vaccine or find ways that that we can can live on comfortably happily you know as a society uh, you know in the midst of covid nineteen or covid twenty three or covid thirty one right I, I I don't think that this is our our last rodeo um, when it comes to uh, to this kind of virus, but uh, I'm I'm pretty confident that the next time when COVID twenty three comes around or thirty one or who knows what, um, that we'll be much more ready. Yeah, I agree. You know, it, it's uh, I definitely look to the positive side, and and I know we're all able to get through this. And you know, if we all you, everyone's been here, we're all in it together, which to some extent is true. We can't forget about the ones that are alone, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, that's not easy uh, by any means. And um, I I believe too that there's a lot more good that will come from this than, than bad. Uh, and it's like anything, it's not going to be easy, uh, but we will survive and get through this. Uh, 
So I, I think that's a good way to end this, right? So, but how, how would you, like, do you have any asks or requests or parting words of advice you'd like to give to our viewers and our listeners? Good to one another. I mean, that's always, a, you know, it's uh, maybe a little bit cliche, but um, we're all facing, facing different, different kinds of stresses. For many people, new kinds of stresses that that perhaps we just haven't quite figured out how to deal with well yet and um, words of wisdom and ones that I need to continue to learn to live by like learn to smile at somebody that isn't smiling at you you know say hello to people that you don't know the names of like random acts of kindness I think go a long long way you know whether that's painting a little rock and sticking it somewhere with a positive message or, or giving somebody a compliment out of the blue. It, uh, I, I think it's what's going to get us through. Um, I've seen a lot of examples of, of humanity. Um, I've seen enough evidence that the world is still a great place that, you know, I have full confidence that um, as long as people, keep trying and trying harder even to uh to put a smile on other people's faces the world will continue to become a better place i love that it, it, it aligns with something i heard uh probably for the first time yesterday actually i forget where the quote comes from or who said it uh, but it was be curious not judgmental i don't know if you remember who says that quote but i thought that was like when i heard that i'm like wow that's quite insightful. It's along those lines, right? Where you're asked questions as opposed to assume, you know, what's going on in the other person's life, right? Because who knows what they're dealing with or who knows what they've done, right? It can, it can benefit both sides. Just be a little curious at which I'm working on. <laughs> so Chris, thanks so much. As always, it's always a good conversation and I never know where the conversations are going to go, but they always end with something good. Um, it's been great. I look forward to having you on yet again. Um, but for now, where's the best way for people to get a hold of you, reach out to you, connect with you in the virtual Always through email, chris at vertdesign.ca or vertdesign.ca if you want to catch the website. Um, of course, there's always the old phone and uh, happy to take calls. The number's online. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for listening and watching. If you're watching this, if you haven't already, wherever you're watching this or listening to this, hit subscribe uh, and don't hesitate to reach out to Chris or myself. If you have any questions, uh, we're here to help and support in any way that we can. Be well. Thanks for watching another episode of The Conscious Builder Show. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe so you can stay up to date on all these great interviews as well as stay up to date on all the exciting projects we have coming, including our first official YouTube series, The Three Day Cottage, which we have some teaser videos out for. So thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next episode.